We are working on pairs today. See a lot of people, a lot of familiar faces. Hello, Jam, Betty, Cynthia. Uh, I want to get from uh, get a few. Um, there are a few questions asking uh, Cynthia. You're asking about uh, eraser pencils. Um, I think they're great. I don't use them a whole lot, but I don't really have a. I don't really have a reason why not. So <laughs> I think it sounds great. Use what works for you. Um, I tend to use the the uh, the needed erasers a bit more, um, and then I use my rubber erasers as well. So. Um, and then jam out, can we possibly make pairs interesting? Well, I guess we're gonna find out. <laughs> so uh, I wanna welcome everybody here. I mean, I've heard from a few of you that um, we've got classes uh, kind of uh, joining us. So I wanna shout out to the Sarasota Military Academy uh, Richmond Art class if you're joining. I look forward to seeing you here. Um, uh, Milburn High School, if you're watching, um, welcome, welcome. So. I want to thank you, and, and again, feel free to shout out if you have any questions as we go along. Uh, Sawyer, I hope you're going to join us again today, bud. Um, so we're just going to get into it. Um, this is the paper I'm using today. This is a uh, Hanamula paper. Um, I'm enjoying it. This is what I used last time as well. Um, and as I said in the description, we're going to be working with graphite. So I've got um, some basic graphite pencils. These are the woodless ones. Um, if you if all you have is a regular yellow number two pencil, I think it's going to work out just great. So um, feel free to follow along. What I've got, I've got a I've got an HB and a four B today. Two B I think would work out really well. And I do have a carbon pencil. Um, this is a kind of a new tool that I, I haven't really utilized a whole. I haven't really utilized a lot. So um, I may try this out today, but I may not. I'm kind of uh, thinking through how we want to structure this today. Uh, now one of the uh, reasons I'm deciding to go with graphite um, is to kind of switch it up. We used a lot of charcoal, some chalk, some tone paper, black paper, white paper. Um, this paper here is uh, is fairly heavy but fairly smooth, and I think it's going to work out really well for us today. Um, and what I want to talk about throughout this lesson, and I'm just going to actually start sketching while I go. I'm going to start kind of thinking through the basic composition. Um, but one of the things that we want to uh, kind of focus on today. Is is the material quality of the uh, you know what we're working with of the medium, uh, and you know there's of course a difference between graphite and charcoal, um, and one of the things I like to tell my students is that you want to take some time to really observe the the fundamental differences of the mediums that you're utilizing. And try to extract as much power from that as you can, and utilize their their qualities and their advantages um, rather than trying to make them do something that they're not really capable of doing. Um, and so, what I mean by that is, there's a particular quality to graphite uh, that we can utilize to our advantage, and that is there's a kind of a lighter, more silvery quality to it. Um, compared to charcoal. Charcoal can, allows you to get a really rich dark. Graphite is less kind of prone to that. You really have to work to get it to, to get a, a nice rich dark. And so then you got to ask yourself, do we want to um, kind of maximize the potential of uh, the graphite and, and really um, kind of, ext again, extract as much power from its natural quality? Or do we want to try to make it do something that it's not really designed to do? And so I think for this um, for this drawing here, I want to really try to maximize the the silvery quality of this. Make this about being light and soft and delicate. Uh, there's a, you know another medium that I've I've never really used called a silver point, which is literally drawing with a piece of silver, and that's kind of the extreme side of the the spectrum um, of drawing materials where it gets very light, very delicate. It's a very hard material, and and when you're working with something like that, you would never kind of expect that you could get rich darks out of it because it's just not what it does. And again, with with graphite, it has a particular value range that we want to respect and and utilize. So. Um, I'm just thinking through right now, it's just some basic structure, basic layout. Um, I'm going to, I want to make sure everything kind of fits on the page properly. Uh, and this is largely about me thinking, uh, thinking through this rather than creating a map at this point, because I want to, 
What I'd like to do for this is kind of create a wash in the graphite. And one of the nice things about these woodless pencils is that when I take it on its side like this, um, I, could, I have a really wide um, stretch of, of graphite that I can utilize to my advantage. Uh, with a wooded, you know, wood core, uh, wood cased pencil that we, we typically utilize, we have less of that. So if you are utilizing uh, a wood cased pencil, then what you might try doing is uh, shaving off some of that wood. You know, grab a razor blade or something, kind of shave that off, and so that you have a um, you have more of that lead exposed. Uh, in some of the other videos, you would have seen me do that with the uh, charcoal pencils, just kind of exposing more of that core. Uh, so one of the things we've talked a little bit before about is uh, the various weights of the graphite. So when you when you if you buy a, a set of graphite art pencils, you're going to see that there uh, there's a kind of a graduated scale of them. Um, on the where you have a scale of H numbers, you know, a 6H, 4H, 2H, etc. Those represent kind of the harder, lighter um, tones or values possible uh, in your in your graphite. Uh, and then you have an HB, which is kind of somewhere in the middle. And then you move up the B uh, levels, where you work from a 2B, a 4B, 6B, 8B, I think up to a 9B now. Um, and uh, those are kind of softer and darker. They get gradually softer and darker. So this is a 4B. Um, no, actually, I'm sorry, this is the HB. I have the 4B that I'm gonna be switching to. So I'm just utilizing the softer one, I mean, the harder one, the lighter marks right now as it, to kind of block in some of the values. So again, this is an HB. It's a little bit harder and it makes a lighter mark. It's not necessarily softer. A softer pencil will make a darker mark. And uh, I want to think through, uh, one of the things we've covered before um, is the concept of the shadow shape. Uh, so if we look at the shape of the pairs, we have, we have a light side, we have a shadow side. And that line between them is the, called the line of termination. And so as we move from light into shadow, there's a point at which there's the, the light just stops and then you're in shadow here and we might have some bounce light kind of back, you know, helping to illuminate this. Um, but, you know, we can see a rough line along in here. It's a very subtle and soft line, but this is the, around the line of termination. So this becomes the form shadow of the pair. This down here is the cast shadow. So that's what's being cast by the object. And then the shadow shape combines the two of them. And the shadow shape is ultimately what's going to be more uh, critical at this point. Um, so my primary objective right now is just to build up tone and value. But while I'm doing that, I'm trying to utilize this time to think through some of the basic proportions, start to refine them, think through the basic uh, uh, shadow shapes here. Now you can see this whole pair is kind of lost. So all I'm really seeing now is a shape of light on each of these pairs. Um, but having gone through it one time to, to start to think through the, um, the proportions, I'm confident that I'll be able to do that again. So, so much of drawing is about doing it once, wiping it down, adjusting it, doing it again, doing it again, um, and, and really repeating that process. Uh, now, I'm going to be lifting out the highlights here. So, by utilizing the, the side of my hand here, I'm just kind of softening it and building up this tone, I wanna get rid of that bright white because that's gonna kind of throw things off. And then I can always erase out to get those highlights again. All right, I just wanna take a quick look through here, make sure we don't have any questions. If you, have, if you don't have the reference photo, go through the description and you'll find a, a link to it there. Hello, everybody got people from all over the place, all right. All right, looks like we're, we're in good shape. So I'm going to continue with this hard pencil. Now, one of the things you wanna be careful with, what I found is a challenge, when if you, if you buy, say, a set of, of drawing pencils that, that has that, that full range from, say, a 4H or a 6H up to a 6 or 8B, if you're starting with a lighter graphite, you wanna just be careful not to burnish the paper too much. You still need a tooth to the paper, and for to accept the graphite 
And so if you really kind of bear down on that, you lose that. And what you do is you end up building up a layer of graphite and then um, applying another layer on top of that graphite is going to be much more of a challenge. And so you just want to be mindful of the, the tooth of the paper and keep your marks light and loose. And so it, you can see right now, again, I'm, I'm still utilizing the side of the, the pencil. It, I've sharpened it down quite a bit. Um, and by continuing to utilize the side of the pencil, I'm keeping that sharp point. So there's an advantage there. And the other advantage is that it just allows that, um, or it prevents us from over burnishing the, the paper and making it difficult to apply subsequent layers. Um, so I, I try to be careful when I'm utilizing a range of pencils to kind of narrow it down. So as, as you can see, I, I have three total. I'll probably not even use the, the carbon pencil, um, but I, because you know, I, I just want to be careful not to uh, kind of build up too much graphite because then it becomes a, a challenge later. If that makes sense. And so a carbon pencil, if you've never utilized it, is essentially it's a kind of a hybrid between charcoal and graphite. I don't really understand how it's made or enough of the science behind it, um, but it's, uh, it is a wonderful tool. But I found when I've utilized it, if I've essentially finished the drawing and then I try to apply it on top of uh, uh, layers of graphite that have already been established, it sometimes doesn't stick. So you um, I'm, if I pull it out later, if I start working with it, you'll see that I'll need to actually erase the paper, I'll have to erase the graphite off the paper to expose the paper again in order for it to stick. So thinking through the shadow shapes, just letting these two pairs merge at this point. You actually can, you can see it in the reference image that there's a very soft transition between the two. And one of the things, one of the reasons I chose graphite for this subject is because I, I really like the the way the the edge of these pairs um, gets lost and found throughout the drawing. There's a delicacy to it, especially as we look on this side. If we we can see how sharp and clear that edge is, and as we come down here, it gets very subtle and soft. We and we, there's very little value difference in here, and so it kind of comes in and out of focus. So we have a sharp edge here. We start to lose it again. We pick it up a little bit more in the shadow and then um, it, we lose it as we move around this portion of it. And so I really love that, um, that challenge uh, of that, that edge control that we're gonna confront here. And I think graphite's really the, the right tool for this because it's, I, you know, it is about light and it is about form, but for me, it's the, ultimately it's about the, the edges and kind of these subtle shifts. And I wanna, again, I wanna honor the the strength of the graphite, which is to create these subtle shifts in value and create this silvery kind of quality. Smooth it out a little bit more here. Yeah, it's all very light right now, so you're not gonna be able to see a whole lot. You're gonna see this drawing really emerge uh, on, the, on the page here. So if you're, if you're having a hard time seeing it, that's exactly what we want to see at this point. Um, so, because one of the things that I've seen students do that can be a challenge is that there's a tendency to go, to go right for the line, create that hard line, and then try to fill it in with value. Uh, and especially with graphite, it's because it's a harder material, as you apply that line, it embosses on the page and it gets very difficult to lift that back out if you've applied it too um, heavily. So. So what I'm doing right now is thinking both, both about positive and negative shape. I want my edges to be soft because I can always go back in and refine them a little bit more. Thinking about basic value structure and the alternating between dark and light, dark and light throughout the drawing. And still utilizing the side of the pencil because I want these, I want these early marks to kind of float off the page a bit. Uh, I, I, if, I, if, I, if I switch to this tripod grip, um, then it's, it's really bearing the, the point down into the page and, and it might create a more permanent mark than I want at this point. So I'm gonna start to kind of think through some basic shapes here. And there, even at the top here, there's this nice alternation between um, 
uh, light and dark, a little bit of light here, and then back into dark. So I want to be mindful of that as I go through. So again, just utilizing the side of the, the pencil for this. Thinking through this form. I'm trying not to stay in, in one spot too long. This is where we can really start to think about you know, trying to build up the whole drawing at a time, at one time. One of the things that I've mentioned before is, is you want to think about the drawing as emerging or developing on the page. You're really, you're really drawing the image out. You're pulling it out. Um, and, and if you can kind of think of it all as one whole that's, that's coming up together at the same time, it can be more helpful to create a, a unified um, unified drawing. And in design, that, that's the fundamental um, principle that, that we're confronted with is, is this balance between unity and variety. Uh, so uh, unity, ultimate unity in, a, in an image would be just a flat square no variation in that or just one flat solid color. As you start to create variation, it starts to create contrast and you want to find that balance um, between having too much contrast um, and too little contrast. And that becomes kind of personal to you. Uh, too much contrast, you run the risk of, of it fracturing and not making, being able to make sense of what's happening on the paper. Too little contrast and it just becomes boring. Uh, so, uh, you know, we, we get attracted to contrast, but we want to be careful not to overdo it. So I've got, I've got the reference photo, I've got it printed up in front of me, and I've got it projected onto a screen right in front of me as well. And I think the, the screen is ultimately a little bit better for me to use, so I'm going to be kind of referencing that. Going back and forth a lot between these two. Again, just utilizing the side of it. I'm holding the pencil at the very back. That helps me to just to float the pencil on top. If I'm not sure about a mark, I can lift it off very easily, and I can pantomime those, those marks, and I can, I can practice it before I even apply it onto the page. Um, and if I need a darker mark, then I can bear down on it a little bit more. So I'm feeling pretty good about this. My, my main concern right now is unity. Uh, I want to make sure that these all kind of hold together nicely. Um, one of the things that's really kind of seductive about graphite, uh, working with pencils, is, um, is it, it can, it's capable of really high detail because it's a harder material than charcoal. Um, and that, that becomes really seductive. Um, and we often want to jump to that right away. And uh, so you got to kind of hold, uh, kind of delay your gratification a little bit. Just going to let this edge soften a bit. The highlight is brighter here, gets more soft as we go down. And so you can see that this is all very subtle, atmospheric at this time. But we're just gradually building up the values. How's everybody doing? Everybody doing all right? Uh, what size paper am I working on? Honestly, it's a difficult one here. This is the paper I'm working with. Um, it is, I've got another, another pad that actually has it printed on there. It's this size right here. Um, 8.3 by 11.7 inches. So this Hanamula uh, paper, it's a, a German company. So they, they're kind of prioritizing the, the metric measurements there. So it's a little bit different than the standard 8.5 by 11, 11 by 14 um, paper sizes that we might be working with. And, and I find that helpful to kind of break from that a little bit. We, get, um, we often get kind of stuck in this habit of of utilizing the same dimension of paper. I do this all the time with, with painting as well because it's, um, it's really easy to go and find an 11 by 14 uh, canvas or a piece of paper or 12 by 16, these kind of standard sizes. And, and then what happens is we, um, 
we stop thinking about the possibility that the composition may not necessarily require those dimensions. And so it's really helpful to shake that up, cut that paper down, um, or you know, maybe work with a larger piece of paper, work in the middle of it, and then once you're done with the drawing, then crop it um, so that you're not, um, you're, you're kind of asking yourself, is this the correct dimension um, given the, the, uh, the subject matter? Is this really what the subject matter requires? Thinking about the cast shadow here within that shadow shape. Keeping my marks subtle and soft at this time. Um, and so there's a, when you work lightly with your graphite, um, even on its side, it's still making contact at a, at, in a very small point. There's just a fine ridge. So you can find that you can actually get a fairly sharp edge, even just working on the side of the, the material. Going to wipe this down a little bit, just going to keep building up these values. And right now there's the, kind of the tooth of the paper is showing through and that's kind of working to our advantage. I think it's going to help um, create some of that, uh, that the, kind of the, the texture of the pear. It's kind of the smooth surface, but it's got these variations, um, these little dots throughout it that I think are really interesting. Again, just kind of bouncing around, bouncing around the drawing, trying not to settle in any one spot too long. So as I'm working in the background, I'm trying to be mindful of this edge along here and creating a contrast. So uh, trying to run these marks in a direction that um, contrasts the edge here, and that's going to help to create some some variation. And I'm kind of darkening this a little bit more than what I'm seeing in the reference image. Gonna heighten that variation so we really create a, a stronger contrast between light and dark. Just continuing to build up those values. So remember one of the things that I've said in, in previous uh, videos is that our, we, we tend to calibrate to the values that we see in front of us. And so, you know, I, this is starting to get darker and darker, but our mind uh, is starting, still conceives of this area as being white. If I erase this out, you can see that there's, there's some significant value to that that's been built up and we want, we can utilize that later on in the drawing. Oh, that's interesting. You see how that really kind of where I erased it down and now it accepts the graphite in a, in a new way. Okay. I'll utilize it a little bit better. So, okay. I'm feeling pretty good about the overall kind of values that I've got and I can start to add a bit more detail into this. And I'm going to work my way essentially now from top to bottom. So now that I'm feeling good about the overall structure, the unity of the shadow shapes, I can create some more variation. Uh, and it start to build up, um, build up some of these these subtle uh, edges that I was talking about earlier. Uh, somebody's asking a question about drawing hands. We're actually going to be dealing with that next week, so hopefully you join us next week as we uh, as we do tackle a hand. And so right in here, I want to, I want to be careful not to overstate this edge um, because then it'll, it'll flatten out. Um, if anything, I want to bring this portion forward, the stem, kind of lightly sketching that in. We have dark here, a little bit of a highlight. So even in these small areas, I'm still thinking about utilizing the side of the pencil rather than the point. Because once I shift to that point, it becomes a much more permanent mark. 
And I just want to be careful with that. Ooh, I kind of erased out the, or I kind of shaded in the, this light a little bit too much. So using my kneaded eraser, I can pull that back out. Come down here, and this this edge right in here is really kind of interesting, where we get a a harder edge here, and as we come down and we start to see more of the kind of the belly of the pear, that edge becomes quite a bit softer. So, we kind of let that let that line reflect that. Think uh, thinking about the cross contour of the pear here. So the contour of the object is the, the line around it that defines the three-dimensional form at the outer edges. Uh, the cross contour are marks that you utilize within those edges to help redefine that, that three-dimensional form. So contour lines can be really helpful. You can convey a lot just by, by rendering the outer edge um, so as I'm working along here, again, I'm still utilizing the side of the pencil. I'm thinking about kind of rocking it back and forth. So if it's kind of getting too wide, I can kind of bring it up a little bit and start to engage the tip a bit more. And uh, using kind of circular marks if I need to create a softer transition. And, and really thinking a lot about pressure here. Just letting it letting it float across the page, and when I need something darker, kind of lean into it a little bit more. And I find this a bit more effective in terms of pressure control to hold the, 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 the pencil this way rather than use, utilizing the tripod grip um, like, I, like you do when you're writing because um, it's, to me it's, it's harder to control pressure with that. And, and especially when you create a more permanent mark All right, and so now we're thinking as we as we follow along this path, it gets a little bit it's clearer up here at the top, clearer and sharper, and it's dark on the pear, lighter against that background. As we come down the pear, we kind of lose that edge, and there's a point at which it's a little bit darker, and I've I've kind of exaggerated it here. It's a little bit darker on the background than it is on the pear. So there's this alternating sequence of light and dark that will help to um, really pop that forward. I'm glad to hear it, uh, Wilma. And uh, you see this kind of scar that's in the pear, and I, I put that there intentionally when I was placing the pear because it helps to show the cross contour of it. Makes this fun little smile, um, but the uh, I, I want to avoid rendering it at this point because I really want to make sure I understand the three-dimensional form and then build it onto that form. If I render it too clearly and too early, it can sometimes pop off the page and actually work against what we're trying to do. Constantly just thinking, looking back and forth between the photo reference and the page. So right in here, um, what you just saw me do right there is thinking um, kind of about it as a plumb line, where as I'm trying to figure out how far out to go with the cast shadow, I look straight up from this point up the pair and see where it intersects this edge. And I'm, I'm doing that on the, the reference photo in front of me. So I'm, that's, a, that's a plumb line when you drop a, a, a vertical line and you see where that line would run through the various elements in your in your drawing, uh, and that that helps me figure out how far out this needs to go. Uh, doing some angle sighting, um, where as I'm as I'm drawing this angle here, I'm looking up at the reference photo and I'm trying to essentially match those angles. So I'm trying to think something like this, carrying it across to see how it see how it lines up. Um, but I'm kind of doing it visually. So one of the things we talked about in the last one as well is you you um, you start to get really good at utilizing the peripheral area of your vision, your, your periphery. So as I'm 
as I'm looking at this and I'm thinking about the edge, that's, that's this part up here. So as I'm, as I'm thinking about this edge here and I'm, I'm keeping my eyes fixed on the reference photo, I'm aware of this, the movement of my pencil in the periphery and I want to and, and I want to see how they line up. And does it does it seem to match the direction of what I'm observing? So you're kind of dividing your attention when you do that. This is fairly straight across here. Think about the curves and and remember if you're struggling with the curves, break them in down into short straight sections. So instead of trying to do this in one shot, think about this section here, and then as it starts to turn, break it into a, a, an angle here, look for the turn up here, and constantly comparing it to the reference photo, and then you can kind of round it out as you need to. One of the nice things about drawing fruit is if you get yourself in the ballpark with the proportions, you're going to be okay because there's no kind of standard, you know, exact form for a pear. They have a general shape, and as long as you capture that, you're going to be in good shape with the viewer. The viewer is going to understand what you're what you're you're trying to create there. All right, again, just kind of softening things down as we go. Oh, uh, Prania, I, am, I have now switched to the 4B, but I am trying to keep my marks light and loose here because I want to I want to make sure that I'm not burnishing the paper too much because then it won't be able to hold the, the graphite, especially in these dark areas where I know I'm going to need to bear down on it. I'm trying to be sensitive to that. Now, I'm kind of losing some of the cross-contour information here, so I want to... I need to bring that back, really be thinking through uh, the, the structure of the pair. Squinting is always helpful. And so when you're building up values, if you're worried about creating a smooth, kind of even tone, if you find that it gets, you get these heavier areas um, and it gets feels blotchy you want to just keep the marks light and loose switch up the directions uh, so I'm switching between a kind of these these hatch got diagonal marks and then these circular marks so then in the in the, the, the lighter areas that I need to fill in I'll come back in with a, a kind of a smaller circular mark build up these values and move on and then as we kind of transition out of the shadow it gets gradually lighter so I'm just um, adjusting the pressure a bit more. And I'm trying to keep that very soft as well so again just I utilize the side of my hand because it's less oily um, if I use my fingertips, it can be problematic and it starts to create kind of blotchy areas like I'm seeing here in the highlight. I'm not too worried about it because I know I can lift that off um, with the eraser. Okay, so I'm just gradually building up value utilizing pressure. running these marks vertically to help kind of reinforce the vertical nature of this. And that may get lost, some of these hatch marks, but it helps me to kind of keep, keep the structure of it in mind. And there's this subtle shadow right in along here. When I printed it out, it gets lost, but when I see it in the, on the screen, it becomes more clear. So this is a line, this, it's a cast shadow from this pair over here but this is all still in shadow. This isn't nearly as bright as the highlight over there, so I just want to be mindful of that. Uh, and then I'm going to look over here. Looking at these shapes here, the stem. A 
little bit of light on this side that I can pull out there. I need to darken this shadow. So now you can see that I've, you know, I've done, I've done this cast shadow multiple times now. I've drawn it. Um, and so it's going to be, it's just the way that the drawing emerges is that you, you lay it down, you kind of wash it out, you lay it down again, you wash it out and you just keep building it up. All right. How are we feeling here? All right, I think we can switch up. How are we doing on time? Yeah, we're about halfway through, so that's, a, that's about right. Um, now, you know, I'm feeling pretty good about the proportions here, so this is where I can start to make uh, marks that are a little bit more permanent. So I'm gonna use my, my kneaded eraser to kind of bring this down to a fine point and pull out some of that light here. And if I over, if I overdraw that, if I pull out too much of that, that's fine. Because I'm gonna come back in and refine that. So I'm still holding it on the side, but I can, I can kind of tilt my hand up a little bit to create a kind of a sharper point when I need it. And then just let that, it's a little bit darker and sharper in here. Let it kind of wrap around that edge. And this is where I, if I, if I want to sharpen up that line, I want to be careful not to make it dark. I can make it a, just a thin, fine line that really sharpens that up. But I'm, it's a very light pressure at this point. And there's, oh man, there's just something really special about a thin graphite line just uh, as something to look at, it gets really beautiful to look at. Um, but I think it's best when it's used sparingly. So I'm going to sharpen this edge. I can darken this. Work my way down. And now I'm really starting to look more... Um, more closely at the, the shapes here of the shadow. And as I bear down now, now I know I'm layering, laying down a thicker, uh, heavier layer of graphite. And it's gonna be more of a challenge to layer anything on top. And I think, I think I'm actually gonna, I'm, I'm gonna ignore the, the carbon pencil I'm just going to stay with this graphite because I just love the subtlety that's happening here. And if you see your, if you see these values getting blotchy, you know, then just try to find the, the light areas between them and just kind of fill them in with these subtle circular marks. You kind of lose the edge along here. I'm going, to, I'm going to come into this a little bit later. What I want to do is continue to find this line of termination and, and find these kind of specific values here. So I've got, the, I've got it on its side, um, and, and by do, doing that, I still have a really sharp point when I need it. So some blotchiness works in our favor because there's kind of a texture to the pair. And we can see this kind of gradation here. When we look at the reference photo, we see it, it almost feels like it transitions from dark to light. Um, but the reality is, is that it's a, it's a fairly even value. What makes this feel lighter and feel like it's gradated is that this is darker here. There's kind of a fluting effect that happens um, because of that. That's that, that's, it's called simultaneous contrast, uh, where because this is darker, um, along this edge, it makes this feel lighter. 
So it, it may be a solid value, you know, totally, but because we have a darker value over here, it feels lighter against this edge, um, and it creates this kind of artificial kind of halo. So I just want to be careful of that, and I, I want to make sure I, I am subtle with that at this point. And if there is more kind of bounce light that I need to erase out, if it, if it does need to get lighter, then I can erase it out with the, uh, the eraser. But um, I want to make sure that I'm not overstating that, uh, that effect by... So I'm trying to think of this as a solid value more than anything. Then once I darken in the cast shadow uh, next to it, then I can really evaluate what needs to happen on the, on the pair. Do I need to lighten it up with, uh, with, uh, the, with the eraser? Going right over the edge, since I know this is darker, I'm not concerned with the edge of the pair at this point. So I'm going to do some negative drawing in order to, to render that. All right. This one's a bit more hypnotic, I think, than perhaps some of the charcoal drawings that we've done. So I'm thinking about this, still thinking about this shadow shape. And again, I'm going to be coming back in and using some negative drawing by draw, darkening in that cast shadow there on these pairs. Circular marks, if I feel like the marks are getting too kind of blotchy, if my hatch marks aren't working out quite right. And again, I'm still, I'm still, my eyes are kind of constantly moving back and forth between my drawing and the reference. If you've ever seen, you know, the, the classic illustrators, I mean, animators, and they have this, you know, this film of transparency that they're constantly layering on and off um, and making adjustments to their drawing. That's kind of the way I think about drawing as well, is my eyes just moving back and forth from the reference, and that's going to happen either with, if it's an actual object in front of me or if I'm working from a photograph. I'm doing the same thing. It's kind of moving them back and forth quickly, um, and so that they kind of, in my mind, they start to merge. And sometimes it almost feels like you're tracing uh, the image when, even though they're not directly on top of one another. I think I can sharpen up some of this area here. So just be really sensitive to the, to the edges and see how subtle you can make them. And ask yourself, do you really need to define the, the edges with a heavy mark or does it, can you do that with just a few um, kind of really kind of clear, sharp edges here and there? And to me, that's the power of graphite is it can create these soft transitions. You know, there's something about this that just, it, it, it feels almost like an old photograph at this point, and, and I'm really kind of responding to that. All right, that's feeling pretty good. I think this needs to be a bit more gradual in here. And you notice that my, my wrist is really locked the whole time. I'm not, I'm not drawing like this, like you might when you're writing. When, you, when you're writing, it's all in the wrist. Uh, when you're drawing, it's all in the, the arm, the, the upper part of the arm. You can see that I kind of lost that stem. So now that I've, I've drawn it already once, it's going to be easier to draw it again. But I'm going to be, I think I'm going to wait on that because I know as I work on this area, there's a chance I'm just going to lose that. I'm going to, it's going to smudge away. All right, there's kind of this subtle shift down in here. It goes from light down into gradual darker, gradually darker. So this is all light side, but it's a little bit darker down at the bottom. All right, so here, maybe what I can do is if I'm happy with this, Switching that tripod grip to get this detail. Kind of reinforce that form. I 
And now I think what I can do is and indicate where the edge is, but I'm going to keep these marks really light. Now what I want to do is lift some of that off with my kneaded eraser. It's kind of tapping along that edge rather than drawing it out too much. And you can utilize it to, um, to make marks as well. So thinking about the cross contour, thinking about that form, and this is where seeing that, seeing this scar along here helps me to visualize a path that, that uh, kind of a path of the structure of those, uh, uh, the, the cross contour marks. So as I'm, as I'm working with the kneaded eraser, it's a very similar kind of thought process as with the graphite. So using some directional marks, if that's too heavy, softening it with circular marks. And then here we have this transition where we, we go from kind of the, the pear is darker against a lighter background. As we shift down this edge, it, it reverses where this is darker, this is lighter. And then as we come down here, there's some reflected light on that surface. And then the pear just becomes a little bit darker along that, that bottom edge. Um, and so this alternating between light and dark along that edge is what's creating that, um, was what, is what creating, is what's creating that edge. So we've talked about this before, this idea that um, what we're looking for are paths, not lines. You know, sometimes there's a line that follows along that path. Sometimes it's a value shift. So just thinking, trying to visualize that path and then ask yourself, what do, what do we need to have along there? Is it subtle? Does it disappear? Does it emerge? Is it a sharp edge? So now we have this edge that's been rendered with this alternating sequence of dark to light to dark. And I can kind of sharpen this up if I need to. I'm feeling pretty good about that. And now I can lift out the highlight right in here. So the highlight's not right up against that edge. You can see in the reference that it's brightest here. Um, so this is the highlight. This whole area is in light. but The highlight is the brightest part and it's just set in from the, uh, from the edge there. So I've kind of erased out this edge, that shape, and then I'm just kind of softening it around the edge with the kneaded eraser. Some texture is okay because it's not a perfectly smooth object. And I've got enough charcoal built up on the side of my hands that I know that as I, um, as I smudge, smudge things out a little bit, it's going to transfer some of that charcoal so I can almost draw with my hands. So, so now there's some of that light across there. I feel like I can uh, pull out some of the highlight along here since I've got my eraser out. And I'm just letting this edge just really disappear. Um, and it becomes a bit more clear as we move up along here. So I can let my, I can let my pencil kind of reflect that. Let, that. let that edge just soft. It's a lost and found edge is the way it's often referred to. I'm feeling that's, feeling that's all right. Um, so if, what I feel like I need to do though is lift that a little bit more right in along in here to pull that, that light inward a little bit. I, it's if, it's going to flatten out if I put too much emphasis along that edge. So I can pull out some of that highlight here. Kind of bring that in a little bit more. Just trying to be subtle and, and delicate with the uh, kneaded eraser. I hope I'm not leaning into the shot so much. I Something that I've done in earlier videos, I did quite a bit of, and I'm trying to be mindful of it. So if I am, just let me know. Um, all right, if anybody's got to cut out, this goes up definitely as a, as a video replay. I can just kind of soften this up a little bit more. It's 
kind of feathering things out a little bit with the kneaded eraser. I don't think I'll need that rubber eraser today. It seems to be lifting off really well. Like I, I like this paper. All right. So now you can see, as you can see, the shadows are still largely undefined. Um, but I'm happy with the values in here. And now I want to define the shape of this first pair by doing some negative drawing in here. So I'm looking at the shape of the cast shadow right up to that edge. And we can see in the reference photo, it's a little bit lighter in here, a little bit darker right around in here, and there's some areas where it gets a little bit sharper. There's a little light passing through in here. So as I establish this line, I'm trying to keep that mark fairly light. I don't want to burnish it too much. This, uh, this ultimately will be consumed by the value over here. I don't, want to, I don't want it to read as a line, I want it to read as an edge. If it reads like a line, then it's gonna flatten things out for me. The same with along in here. So I'm just kind of help, using this line to help me visualize the edge, but as I, as I build up the values on the, the cast shadow, I want that line to be consumed by it, and then it disappears. And then up here we have this kind of triangular form Now think about that path. So I'm just kind of practicing that, that line. I'm not really making a mark there. I'm trying to visualize that edge. And then as I, as I darken this area, I'm trying to work up to that edge rather than drawing a line and then filling it in. So now we get to the point where I'm really kind of bearing down on the page to get it as dark as it, it'll go, and it's really not all that dark. If I, if I utilize, if I place this next to it, you can see that rich black of this, of this pencil here next to the, that dark value there. That's as really as dark as this will go. You can get a, you know, a darker graphite, but again, this is all about kind of really honoring the um, the silvery quality of the graphite and trying to extract, extract as much power from that as possible rather than try to make it something it's not. This isn't about making these rich darks. So as I, as I build up these values here, trying to be mindful of the directionality of the marks. If I run these horizontally, it'll contrast against the curve of the of the pair, and, uh, and it'll help to reinforce the, the spatial relationships. So I'm trying to be mindful of this path along here, but I'm not really drawing it and then filling it in, creating it as a series of horizontal marks that just stop at that point. And then I think I can, and here there's, it gets a little bit more clear along the central part of the shadow so I can bear down a little bit more and bring in a line just subtly there. All right, how's everybody doing? Uh, does graphite, yeah, you know, some people, ref, you know, they'll still call them lead pencils or they'll call the, the core of a pencil lead. It used to be actual lead, which is a much softer material. Um, we stopped using lead because it's a, it's a pretty bad uh, mineral there. Um, caused some damage, so you want to stay away from lead. Um, we switched to graphite, and that's really what you're going to find in all pencils is a graphite core. And what's cool about graphite is it gets, you know, it's mined from the, the earth. There's not that many graphite mines around the world. It comes out as a big chunk and then it gets ground up into this fine powder. And then it gets mixed with a kind of a, a, a binder, kind of a clay binder. And that's what gives you the varying um, uh, values of the hardnesses of the graphite is that if, if it has more of that binder, has less graphite, and it's a harder material. So that's why it creates a, 
a lighter and finer mark, and then the softer graphite has less of that binding material, and it um, it leaves it, it you know drops more graphite onto the page, making a darker mark. I mean, it's cool to think as, as we're holding these sticks of 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 uh, you know, our pencils here, this, these sticks of graphite that it once existed. It's this giant rock in the earth. All right, so I want to be careful right in this section here. All right. So the, the stem, it's a little bit darker right in here, this top portion. There's a bit of a line. Do some negative drawing, drawing the kind of the pit of the, uh, the stem there. Okay, right in here. Looking at this shape, using that negative space to create the, the appearance of that stem. And then what I can do is I've got that line that crosses through it, so I'm going to lift that out with the eraser and fill that in. Come back in and, and darken this, this background. So again, I'm, I'm still utilizing the side of the, the pencil because I don't want to have these harder marks. Right in here, I can really switch to this tripod grip and bear down. That's all right. But on the, on the, the, uh, the cast shadow here, I want to avoid that. And then there's a subtle, subtle cast shadow here. And then this shadow has, as the shadow of the stem becomes a bit clearer. So again, I'm not drawing a line and then filling it in. I'm trying to be aware of that shape. So I'm holding the, the picture of that shape in my mind and then building it as a sequence of these horizontal marks. And that'll read more effectively as a shadow. Same with this shadow. I don't want this to be a hard line because then we, then we start to think of it as a shape. Um, but this is actually the surface. This is the surface of the the, uh, the pairs are sitting on, and we go from shadow to light. If we draw a line, then our brain thinks, oh, that's a different object altogether, and it's not. This is all one object here. It's just a different value because part of it's in shadow, part of it's in light. All right, so here we can see, you know, this felt really earlier, it felt like a solid value. But now as we darken this, this starts to feel lighter, even though it's not. This is the same value as what we have up here. So we have this, this illusion taking place here. All right, so let me see. How do we feel about things? All right. I feel like this can be rounded out a little bit more, so I'm just kind of bringing this up. I want to be sensitive to this edge. I don't want it to be a hard, consistent edge throughout it. So maybe it's a little bit harder up here, you know, more clear up here, and then it gets lost into this shadow. Create more value here. Again, still utilizing the side of the pencil. So I'm going to use the, the tip of it in a bit. Here's a little dark mark that just naturally formed. I don't know if it was just a something on the paper, or something I did. Kind of clarify this edge a little bit. I'm trying to be careful not to create a consistent edge. I want, to, I want that to emerge more subtly. And this, I think, what am I looking at here? There's this thin sliver, and I think that's actually the cast shadow on the surface. It's hard to tell, but I'm gonna draw this little bump right in here. All right, I feel like that's coming together all right. There's a, I'm gonna kind of soften this. And now we can start adding some of these kind of fine details. So if we wanna create this scar along here, again, I wanna be really careful not to outline it and then fill it in. What I, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that it sits on that form. So what I can do is I can kind of pantomime that, that path. I can visualize where I wanna put it. I'm not even, excuse me, I'm not even touching the paper but I'm passing over there trying to visualize where that's gonna be. And then I'm gonna create that utilizing, uh, utilizing a series of these kind of vertical marks 
that follow along that path. And so if I lose that path, then I just lift the pencil and, I, and I'm floating above the page trying to visualize it again. And I can drop in along it, keeping it light in case I miss the mark. But you know, this, there's nothing to say that this has to be 100% accurate um, compared to what I'm seeing on the, uh, on the reference photo. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty good about it though. So I'm gonna come back in, darken some areas. And by, so by doing that, it, it kind of ensures that we read these marks as sitting on that surface, as part of that surface. It's not a separate, it's not a separate thing that's stuck on top. And that's it's a, 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 a point that um, you want to hold in your mind, especially if your, your goal is to become a better portrait artist. Um, it becomes really e easy to you know, visualize the eyes as separate from the rest of the face or the nose. Um, but they're really all part of one thing. And so utilizing this process in a variety of subjects can be really helpful to make sure everything stays together. And as I move into the shadow, this is falling into shadow and I can darken that as well. And it, it creates this gradation as we move across that references the gradation of the pair. Um, we can go, come into in these shadow areas, darken up some of these areas here. Got a little scar here that we can create. And this is a little bit too harsh. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase that out. And I think what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna shape this down into kind of this sharper ridge, kind of a wedge. Lightly lift off some of these values to define that edge a bit more, following, trying to follow along the cross contour. Gonna knock this down a little bit. So by doing that, I, I could, you could still see what I erased out, it's just softer, and then I can come back in and pull out the brightest point of the highlight right in here. Um, so now I can ask myself as I look at this, is this, is this really reading? do it the way I want. I can vary from the reference photo if I need to. You know, it's not about these rich darks and the strong contrast between the highlight and the shadow. This is about subtlety and this is about it being graphite that I'm using, not charcoal, not, you know, something that has uh, a greater capacity for value contrast. So if, if you're looking at the subject and what's drawing you to it is that contrast, you know, the highlight and then that dark cat sh shadow, the, especially the cast shadow. If that's what's attracting you, then maybe you say, "Hey, I want to do this in, uh, I want to do this in charcoal because I can get that that range." Um, the graphite is all about subtlety, and I just love what's happening in here. Just as marks on a, on the page, it's really kind of interesting. Um, I kind of feel like I can kind of adjust this form a little bit. And then kind of feather this out. All right. I'm feeling like that's working out all right. Any questions? Uh, we do this every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Monday we're doing it's irresistible working a bit with again with facial features drawing an ear um, but I really appreciate you all taking the time to join me today um, this is a bit more perhaps meditative than some of the other ones I've done because it's so subtle and it's almost hypnotic just kind of building up layer after layer of graphite and gradually building these forms. Um, but it's been a lot of fun and, and uh, I hope you've been joining me as we do this. Share it with your friends, get them to join along too. This is drawing is a, it's a wonderful communal activity. We often find that 
you know, as artists, we there are a lot of artists out there who are uh, prone to going into the studio or you know wherever you're at and doing this as as a solitary exercise. Um, and I, I definitely do that. For me, that's that's the value in art making. Um, but I also really enjoy having uh, people around me. Joining a group of people um, can be a wonderful way to um, connect and to build skills, see what other people are doing, how they tackle a subject, um, start dialoguing with people. Um, so if you are going to follow along next week, The Irresistible, I have the reference image for that in the description. If you want to learn more about the series, you can go to artistnetwork.com where I have a banner at the top that, uh, or there's a, a menu item at the top that has more um, resources for artists. Um, there's a really great page that we just launched on the website that has additional resources for artists and families, you know, people looking to um, use art as a, as a tool for uh, kind of maximizing their time while we're indoors, um, dealing with um, this kind of crisis in a new way. This is all about kind of using this time to build your skills, try something new. I don't draw nearly enough, but because of this, I found that I've, I've been taking a lot more time to do it. So thank you all for joining me. I'm going to let this run for a little bit, see if any additional questions come in. Uh, yeah, I like the, that comment about the pair. It looks like it's smiling. It certainly does. Um, I'm going to have this, ten, or have this um, desire right now to kind of you know, drop a few little eyeballs in there or something. But, you know, play, oh, excuse me, play around with it and uh, make it your own. Uh, set up your own still life. That's always the best. Utilize the reference photo if you need to. Um, to see actually what happens if I bring in the shading stump and kind of smooth this out to create some contrast. Kind of like that. So creating contrast between the cast shadow and the pair, but keeping it all very subtle. So using texture as that contrast. All right, thank you, thank you. Uh, you are welcome, everybody. Oh, so, oh, that's interesting comment about if you're watching it on your phone, apparently the chat doesn't stay up. So um, uh, maybe, you know, perhaps if you're able to watch it on a, on a desktop computer or a tablet or something, you can watch the replay. Um, the, the live chat comes up as a replay, um, so uh, it's, it's, it's kind of fun for me to go back through and look at the comments and, and invariably I miss them because there's a, like a 30 second delay um, or so from what I'm doing and then what you're actually seeing. So sometimes I'll sign off and then for the next 30 seconds there's additional comments coming in. Sometimes there are questions that I think are really important. So if I miss them and I try to, um, I try to address them in the comments uh, of the video that gets posted afterwards. So. Uh, PMT is having difficulty making the right pair look behind the front one. Um, there, let's see, there's, the, the reason I set up the still life in this way is to have that clear separation between the front pair and the back pair. But you can see that there are some areas where it's, it's kind of lost. Um, so you can, this edge right in here helps to lose that. So check out your drawing and see if perhaps that gets overstated. Um, and then you also want to look at the, the nature of these curves. So when you have this shape here, it's curved this way. It, it's, when it's overlapping the pair, it's uh, kind of a convex curve kind of pushing into it. That helps pop that off. If this curve went like this, then that back pair would actually want to pop forward. So there's these two portions of the curve. There's this convex and then there's this convex. And those are two elements that help to push that forward as well. Um, and then the final thing that you want to just double check is this cast shadow here. Um, and, and really try to make sure that these shadows stay part of that solid shadow shape um, and that they're not too defined uh, strictly, but that should help post, po um, kind of push that back. Another thing you, can look, thing you can look at is the value contrast. Maybe make some of the darker values here in the foreground, you know, uh, really kind of bear down on here 
to help pop that forward and let these become lighter and softer. So those are some things that might be helpful. Draw some grapes. That's a wonderful suggestion. I might actually go out and do that. Get some, get some grapes. Let's see. Gonna look back from some uh, questions here. Again, I want to thank you all the classes that I've seen. So if you're Sarasota Military Academy, uh, Milburn High School, uh, if you're Richmond Art Classes, welcome, welcome. If you are part of an art class and you, you think your fellow classmates or if you're an instructor, you think they want to watch this, then um, uh, that would be, uh, you're always welcome. I'm happy to kind of take suggestions. Oh, uh, Pranya asked earlier, do we have to blend the dark portion into the light area on the second pair? Um, are you talking about kind of creating a, sh a sharper contrast there? I mean, you couldn't make it a, a kind of a, a sharper line. The softer the transition between light and dark, um, the kind of the smoother that surface is going to be. Um, but I can, you know, I, I kind of understated this shadow belong here a little bit. I could possibly make that a little bit sharper. All right. The Jamaican artist, I stopped drawing for 10 years and then I started back. That's fantastic. I love that. It's the best. Uh, when you pick up art again. And what I found, honestly, is, is that picking up drawing again after a long break, um, you often really kind of pick up where you were before. Um, there is some, there, you know, sometimes you can kind of lose some, some dexterity, some kind of focus, but you're going to pick it up really fast again. So if you're kind of frustrated at all, just give it time, a few quick practices, and you're going to be good to go. So it's so hard to make, so... Um, so hard to make the light light enough and the darks dark enough. For me, everything is mid-tones. Again, that's the kind of the nature of graphite. Um, it, it doesn't lend itself to really rich darks. And so it is all about the subtlety. Um, and, and again, this may not be the right me medium for you. If, if you're looking for a greater contrast, um, then try creating this in charcoal where you can really bear down and get those nice rich darks. Um, again, for me, I, I felt like I was attracted to these, these subtle shifts, especially along the edges, like in along in here. Um, and I think graphite kind of worked as well, worked well for that. So yeah, there are a lot in that mid-tone. And, and if, you, if I were to hold this up and look at it from across the room, it would not hold up very well. Um, the, that, again, that's the nature of graphite, is that it's all about the subtlety and it favors being close um, and kind of an intimate approach to drawing. If you're looking for something more bold, then I say just go for the charcoal or maybe Conte crayon. You're welcome, Jam. Hopefully this is interesting enough. All right, just reading through here. All right, I will see you all on Monday. Um, again, I'm just going through this. Glad to hear you've learned so much. I'm going to sign off for now. See you all on Monday. Have a great weekend. Be safe. Keep practicing. And we'll jump into drawing an ear on Monday. <laughs>